Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in Autodesk Structural Bridge Design in which we are going to continue our efforts in performing the analysis and design of a two-span pre-stressed reinforced concrete girder bridge. In this video we are going to see our analysis results and learn how to transfer the analysis results from our refined model onto our design beam. Now as I want to mention this is part of a multi-part series about bridges in general and about the Autodesk Structural Bridge design specifically, those playlists will be linked on the top right for you to check out if you have forgotten where we reached or if you need more context about the entire series. So with that being said and without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Okay, so what we have done last time is we created some influence surfaces in the previous video and we used those influence surfaces to apply loads to maximize moments and shears and whatnot. Now with those loads being applied, I need to perform the analysis for the structure. Now to achieve that, first of all, I need to make sure that my refined model is used and that I can go to calculate and click on analyze structure. Notice that transfer results is not available yet because we don't have any results to transfer. What will happen now is there is going to be a structural analysis for the entire structure and the internal forces and nodal forces and whatnot are going to be generated. Those loads are then later going to be transferred to the beams in order for us to continue the design of those beams. Let's take a look how we can do that. I click on calculate, click on analyze structure and of course now stuff will happen. And you can see the load cases that you can analyze for. Now here we have some unassigned load cases. That's due to the fact that I did some trial and error on the software and was doing my own work. But what we have done is we have done actual LS1 load optimization load set for one and for two. The idea behind this, if you remember from the previous video, was that we selected one certain beam and we basically created everything that maximizes the moment and everything that maximizes the shear and we're gonna analyze the structure for those things. You see, the way it's done, allow me to explain this to you very quickly. Let me first of all cancel this entire thing. The way it's done is, we are going to select one internal beam from span one, and we created the shear and the moment and the influence surfaces so that we can apply the loads in a certain position to maximize the moments and the shears on that beam. Now you have a lot of beams by the way and you would need to do the same for every single one of those. For example, you would have to do the same for the edge beam and for the same for the span 2 beams and so on. What we have done so far is we have done this for the internal span, the inner beam of span 1, so basically this one. So you will see we're going to focus on this beam and you will see that the loadings are tailored to be for this beam. That's the reason why when I click on calculate and analyze, you can see you're seeing the LS1, load optimization one, and you can see if you hover over it, you can see this is to maximize the moment around Y, which is sagging or hogging, of course, for a certain member, which is longitudinal beam that is between members 37 to 48. The other one is for shear. So of course I'm gonna analyze for those two things. Now if you click on OK, it will start the analysis. In some softwares, you might get an error about running out of memory. If you click OK and you ran into that error, then please go to Options, go to Memory Management, and click on Medium at least, or Large. Let me show you. Maybe I will get the error. Calculate, Analyze, and let me deactivate this and run. Now here it tells you there is a load off the structure and part of the load might not be exactly on the structure. Why is that the case? Because when you are moving a truck, while you are moving the truck on the bridge, there can be a circumstance where some wheels of the truck may be outside the bridge, whereas the other loads or the other wheels are inside the bridge. So that's okay, I'd ignore that. And so far so good, I thought I would get an error about the memory. Seems everything is fine. Ah, there is the error. Okay, it's still there. A core overflow has occurred. So you see that the core memory is not enough. So we need to increase the core memory. So I'll go here to options, memory management, and I could change it by hand, but I'm gonna just click on medium model because our degrees of freedom are less than 5,000 and our load cases might be 30 or less. So I think this is better. You could go for the max or change it yourself, but I think those presets are okay. Let me calculate the structure again and see what happens. Remember, we are specifically focused on the beam in span one. It takes some time to analyze the structure, but that's okay. 
Okay, so the analysis is complete. You should click on results to see the results. However, if you by mistake click on done, you would think I lost my results. No, you didn't. You can go to file and click on something called results and it would be the same thing. I want to remind you once again that we are analyzing for this beam, which is just above the center line. And that's our beam of interest. So here, let's go and check it out. So we're basically analyzing for this beam. So the analysis is complete. We can go to file and results. Remember, this entire analysis is for one certain beam, tailored for one certain beam. You would need to change it to check out other beams. So, okay, let's check out our load case here and let's check out the load cases we have. Or let's check out our load compilations. And now we can check out, for example, uh, I don't know, C7 SLS, okay? You can see how the load is being applied here to maximize the load. And if you want to see the load application, you can click on this button, toggle between load object. And you can see that the loads have been applied here. It seems no load was applied here, which is kind of strange, but it shouldn't be. Because if I, my opinion is if you push here, if you apply a load here, this could buckle up, causing a relief of the moment on that beam. So that's maybe the reason why there is no loading. You can check out those loadings here, and uh, you can check out how the load was distributed for each one of those uh, certain maximizations that you're trying to achieve. And well, let's select C7, for example, here and remove this load thing. And all those cases were considered automatically by the software. If you want to see the loads per joint, you can click on show joint loading and it will show you how the loads were applied on the joints. Furthermore, you can see different things if you want to, of course, of course here the FZ is the most important load. You could also have other loads, but FZ is the vertical load. Let me untick this one and see what else I can see. At the moment, we are looking at the results for joints and you are seeing now the displacement DZ. You can click on it, for example, and change for the other displacements X and R and so on. But DZ is the most important one because that is your deflection shape. But that's not enough. Remember, why did we even do this? We did this because we want to design our beams. So we are interested in the loads on those beams. Furthermore, before I change it, before I go to beams, I want to mention here that those are for live loads. The dead load itself was not included, so I must include the dead loads. So here I will select C2, and now the dead loads have been applied in this entire thing. There is a lot more you can do here. You can discover yourself, because the only thing I will be doing is I will transfer the loads to the beam. But just for the sake of discovery, you click on envelope, for example, and see the envelopes of the results on what? If you click on envelopes, you can see that it immediately checked beams for you because envelopes are the effects of the internal forces maximized on elements. If you go back to compilation, you can select between beam and joint. Okay, so for now, joints has been accomplished. You can see the deflection shape for joints. If you go to beam, you can see the internal forces. Fz here is the shear. And for example, Fx is the axial force. My is the bending moment as it's supposed to be. Of course, those are different compilations for different elements. For different loadings, you can see different effects. Of course, you can select any load case you want, and you can see how the load case affects the bending moment diagram on the elements. Fantastic. Now here, you might also be interested in something called the envelope. The envelope is the maximization and minimization of all those values. And if you click on that, it will show you the envelope of the entire beam. It tells you E8, as in envelope 8, you have other envelopes you can check out if you want. Now here's the thing, you can switch and look and see and select and all those things you can do and check out for yourself. But I'm gonna go back to compilation and see for example here, let's say MY, bending moment again, and you can see that for this specific load case you have this amount of uh, moment. If you click on envelope, it will show you a corresponding envelope for a certain moment. You can see this is the SLS characteristic moment for 37, remember 3748, that's that one, MY. I think there should be an M plus, yeah, there we go. And you can see this is the maximum moment on that element. On the side here, on the very side, you can see results. You can change the scale of results. You can also go to general and show some annotations if you want. And if you show the annotations, you will see some results. Those might be an overkill. You can't see anything, but I have a very easy fix for that. I will click on something called filter. And when I click on filter, I'm going, first of all, to delete, deselect everything. Then I'm going to click on longitudinal beam. I'm going to select that one because that is the design beam we are focusing on. If I click OK, now the results appear for that design beam, for this envelope. Of course, you can switch different envelopes and different load cases. And again, once you switch, you have to uh, filter again. By filtering again, you have, of course, deselect all and then go to longitudinal beam 
and then click on that thing again and hit apply or okay. Of course, that is now the negative moment. So you can see that you can browse and check out the results. You could even, for example, let me show you, if you select M+, plus, let me show you something cool. I will filter this thing here, and once again, I will deselect everything and go to my pick and pick the longitudinal beam. Okay, now that's the one. You can also, besides it, show two things, like the FZ and the MY. The reason why there is some zigzaggy stuff happening here is because of the offsets, but uh, you can see that kind of makes sense. There is a high shear in the beginning, low shear in the end, Notice that this is not the maximum shear because your envelope is for the SLS characteristic moment. I think we did something about the shear. I forgot what it is. Ah, oh, there it is, shear. If you click on that, of course, now everything is kind of hard to see. Let me just remove those results. And you can see that now the shear has been maximized for that envelope. So it seems that the software has done everything it needed to do, which is kind of cool. Um, let me just, for example, again, uh, filter and basically select here again, longitudinal, deselect and click this one, apply or okay. So that's the shear and that's the moment. But this time the moment is not maximum because it hasn't been selected for the maximum envelope here. The loads were applied to maximize the shear. But well, those are results nonetheless. So they seem to make sense. I can click on X now to exit, which opens this again. And now I can, for the next video, I can go to calculate and do something called transfer results. Transfer results means that I'm gonna take the results I found from my analysis and place them on a certain beam. If you click on transfer results, you can see all beams are ready. We shall do this next time, but here's what we're gonna do. We're going to select the beam that was our target and we're going to add the stuff that we want to transfer from the full structure to that beam. Why do we do this? Because we cannot analyze the beam alone, because the truck is not going to move above the beam, it's going to move on the structure somewhere. So we had to analyze our entire structure, find out the envelope that creates the maximum moments and shears and everything on that beam. And now what we will do next time is we're going to get those results and transfer them on the beam as a precursor to designing the pre-stressed beam. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. In today's video, we basically checked out how the structural analysis works for a certain bridge, for a certain beam. We have seen the results, and now we are ready to transfer the results onto the design beam. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. In the end, I want to give a structural analysis sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their support to the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.